Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Maurice Tunney. I'm the head of IT solutions at a firm called Field Fisher Waterhouse. If anyone doesn't know us, we're sort of mid-table, uh, 100 million uh, annual turnover with uh, broad sort of European uh, practice with offices across Europe. Um, I'm talking to you today about business process automation. Okay, so what is business process automation? It's different things to different people. Um, there's a number of definitions there. My definition is probably the favorite, is the second one down. It's the automation of manual processes using, using technology. Um, and that can be from a very small process to a massively complex process. Depends on, on the need. It depends on what you're after and what you're trying to achieve. Um, so where do you start off? On the business process automation side, there's, there's the IT side of things. If you just want to focus internally on the IT department, you can go to uh, great lengths to automate your uh, new joiner intake process or to, to automate the link up bet between different systems at the back end. But what I'm going to focus on today is more on the business side of things, uh, looking at going into the business and finding areas that you can really add value. Now, I don't know in your firms, but in my firm, the IT guy coming to knock on the door and say, I can make you more effective and more efficient is not always well received. The lawyers are very good at, at, at doing their lawyering stuff, and an IT person is to be there in the background to, to make sure that the lights uh, are on and the IT systems work. So it's very difficult to, in my role to, to, to add value, to get in, in front of the right people and to persuade them that what we're trying to do is, is to make them more efficient. So my advice is to, to, to choose your champions wisely. First of all, find out your a friendly, more technologically advanced or, or friendly uh, a partner or department and work with them, go to them and find out, look, we want to, to assist here. How can we help? How can we come and look at what you're doing and, and make it better? So we've got, I'm really lucky, I've got a very good business analyst in my team and I approached the department and said, look, we've got this resource. He'll come and sit with you for three weeks and look at what you're doing and map out the processes that you're carrying out and then identify where the pain points are. And what you've got to realize is there's not always going to be a technological solution that's going to make things better. Uh, one of the examples that um, he found in a department we worked with is there's two people that work a lot together and yet sit on different sides of the floor. So literally the suggestion was, look, why don't you put him and her next to each other, and that's saved 15 minutes a day, which doesn't sound a huge amount, but you factor that out over a week or a month or a year, that's a huge amount of time that's been saved. So get into the departments, find the, the, the friendly faces first that you can really prove yourself. Find small successes, because success, I know it's a cliche, but success breeds success. If you can go into a department and demonstrably prove that a technological solution is going to make things better um, and you can then go to the next department or the next partner and say look this is what we've done in this department and it's really uh, reaped uh, benefits can we come and do the same thing with you and more often than not that's that's going to get a more uh, friendly response so the benefits sort of speak for themselves really you're trying to reduce human errors trying to with a number of different processes in different departments, they are entering, I mean, one department we've worked with are entering the same piece of information in three different systems. So putting in a simple process, literally filling that information into one form, and then that automates and populates those different processes has saved a lot of time and effort. Um, and I suppose at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is, is, is reduce cost and increase profit, which is what we're all here for at the end of the day. Um, before you embark on this, what I would recommend if you are going to do this and do this properly is really think about the end, the end game and think about the delivery mechanism because if you're going to be automating a number of small processes or even large processes, there's always going to be a place where you're going to launch or, or need, the users need to go to, to to start these processes. So really think about whether it's going to be from your intranet or from a portal of some description or even from Outlook, but it's got to be 
you've got to standardize. It's got to be one place and the same look and feel and, and well branded so that people know they're going to a certain spot on the internet or in Outlook. They're going there for a reason and they know why they're going there. And it's, uh, it's important so that people understand why they're doing it. Um, and on the change management side, with any projects of, of this nature, change management is, is crucial. So make sure that the people involved understand why you're doing it and what the end goal is and how you're going to get there. You can get really complicated. Um, we don't. Um, these are a number of the process improvement tools out there. Six Sigma is, is very popular, not necessarily in legal, um, more in, uh, in other businesses. Um, for us, a lot of it was around workshops and, and just common sense, really. Just getting the right people's opinions and making sure that they're feeling involved and their opinions matter and what you're going to be producing is something that they've had some involvement with, so they're going to associate it with it going forward. So how have we gone about what we're doing? Um, it's... In my case, it's a case of um, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Three years ago, I put a, a very complicated business uh, case to the, to the partnership to invest in, uh, in, in a tool to do this, and it fell flat. They didn't get it. They had a lot going on at the time, but I probably chose wrongly with regards to the first project. I chose to, to automate the, uh, the paying of disbursements, which... I had very detailed statistics on how much that was going to save them on time and on cost. But I think the problem, that the, the, the fault I made was that the, the, the partners on the, on the exec committee that were looking at the proposal weren't really affected by disbursements. That was held, handled by someone else. The secretaries dealt with that, and as far as they were concerned, it, it didn't really have an impact on them. And, and it fell flat. Um, so. Fortunately, we haven't been twiddling our thumbs ever since. We've worked on other projects, but along came outcomes focused regulation. And I saw the opportunity to, to reinvigorate the, the business process automation uh, project. And I needed a, a vehicle to do that. And one of the things that we felt we needed to relook at was our conflict checking process. Um, we felt that it worked fine, but with the outcomes focused regulation, we felt it might not be as future proof as we'd like. So, I uh, carried out some analysis on the existing forms. Now, we've currently got uh, one form for the client process and one form for the matter inception process. Let me just have some water before I totally lose my voice. Sorry. So, we reviewed both processes that hadn't been looked at in about six or seven years and looked at whether or not they were still fit for purpose, whether or not that the technology that we were using currently was, was future proof. And we quickly found that it, it wasn't. Both of them were coming very close to end of life. Both of them were capturing information that no one was looking at, and both of them were missing uh, various extremely important pieces of information that various different elements of the business had been screaming out for for years. Um, so I then took that analysis back to the board and just said, look, we need to change the process. Let's do it with one single process um, and bearing in mind the, the risk elements that we now need to, to improve and enhance. Um, let's do that. So we, I got the approval to go ahead. And this is where the, the Windscribe link up is. Um, we went to market and looked at a variety of different tools. Um, we had already invested in, a, in another product, which funny enough is another of the sponsors today, um, in Intap's integration builder tool, which allows us to, to integrate our back-end systems. And so we felt that what Winscribe brought to the table was they were very strong on the front end side of things. And we already had the back end side of things covered. So it was a good link up. We're on time and on budget, but it's not live yet. And we're still about 95% of, uh, of the way there with the development. But so far, everything's going really well. Um, so how did we get to where we are now with the development? We, we went back into the business and, and carried out workshops with the, the key teams and worked through how they're doing it now and what the, the problem was and what was missing. And then we documented that and we used a, a wireframing tool called Balsamic. I don't know if anyone's come across it. It's very cheap. I think it was about $20. And what it allowed us to do is, is really document what the screens were likely to look like and what the, the, the fields that 
they wanted to capture were going to be grouped together and how that was then going to flow. And it really helped the more experienced practitioners who perhaps aren't as, as tech friendly and couldn't conceptualize how this was going to look and feel. And then got them to, to sign off on, on that look and feel so they felt that they really knew what was coming. Um, and that's worked really well. Um, again, we haven't had it signed off at the final stage yet, so hopefully we're going to deliver what they're after. Um, as part of what we're building, we're not rebuilding exactly what was there before. What we're trying to do is obviously take ad advantage of the technology and, and automate wherever possible. Um, some of the examples that we're doing um, in the uh, matter inception at the matter inception stage for existing clients, we're feeding into our uh, practice management system and bringing back the last three matters that have been worked on. So before you create a new matter, you can actually see that they have or haven't paid their bills. So it might be a new department or a new area of the business working with this particular client and very excited about that. And then they actually see that they haven't paid their bills for the last three matters, so they should reconsider whether or not they should do that business. And that's really saved a huge amount of time and, and cost, because in the past they didn't have that, and they'd already created that matter and started work and then found out later that they weren't paying their bills. Um, other areas that um, we've improved, some of our sort of high volume, low volume uh, areas are creating matters that are almost identical, but a thousand of them a week. And in the current process, they have to do that for every single matter of a three or four page or three or four screens. Whereas with the new process, we've got a template type uh, option where they can literally just change what's changed, what's different. Say, for example, on a, a huge block of flats that um, you've got 150 different tenants, the, the, the address is identical. It's just the, the number of the flats. So you can just change that and not fill out all the rest of the information, which, again, is saving a huge amount of time and effort. The other area was being a, uh, a European uh, law firm is different offices operate in different ways. And what we're trying to do with this form is, is bring consistency, particularly on the risk management side of things, where currently the conflict checking for the different offices is actually carried out in London, which is not always the most effective. So by putting this form in place and making sure that we've got all the, the different jurisdictional regulations in place, the, the onus is on, on the different offices, and they are the ones that are carrying this process out. And that's, we're getting so much better buy-in. Again, we haven't gone live yet, but they're certainly saying the right things and uh, can see the advantages of having a consistent approach. How are we doing for time? Um, while this is going on, because obviously a, a client matter inception is not exactly a, a small uh, project and going against my advice of starting small, um, there are other processes that we're looking at, and we have already started working on a couple, including the, the trademarks department, where there's three different entry points um, or for single pieces of information. So we're, we're narrowing that down to one entry point. Um, and processes going forward on the IT side, we're looking at the new joiners and, and leavers processes, because um, we've got three different systems or three different departments involved at the moment, which is unnecessary. Why not let HR do uh, the, the creation once and let everyone else just automatically feed into the different systems? Um, case management is something that um, we're looking at. Uh, we have a, a tool in place that is used by a couple of different departments. So we're analyzing whether or not that's being used effectively and whether or not the, um, the BPM tool can, can replace that. Um, matter management is, is something that um, no one really can get right, particularly on the matter closure side of things, something that um, is always the last thing on people's lists. So we're trying to look at ways of, of trying to automate that and making it as easy as possible. And uh, my initial uh, uh, project on the disbursement side is, is something that hopefully will be back on the agenda soon, because uh, there are definitely some savings to be made there. So on the uh, lessons learned, um, we put together, I think, a 140-page specification um, that was uh, as part of the tender. Um, and even that, I don't think, was detailed enough, which I know sounds insane. But with the development of this nature, you can't have too much detail because this, you don't want to leave anything open to interpretation because what you may think is as clear as day, a developer um, might not 
because they might see some sort of scope for interpretation. Um, and on the, the, the going right down to the detail level on the fields themselves, you'd really need to specify everything and have a, we had a, a rather large spreadsheet showing every single field and, and the different characteristics or attributes of each field, whether it was mandatory, whether it needed to be captured at, uh, at the same time as another field, and, and so on and so forth. Um, I found that the balsamic tool, I'm not a, I haven't, don't have any shares in the tool, I assure you, but it was really useful, um, it was, uh, and we're still using it for all of our other specifications. Um, and then, as part of that, the screenshots for the workshops worked really well. Flying through this, because I know there's lunch coming. So, I've really flown through that, um, and apologies for that, but all I'm saying is, is that there are a number of opportunities within your organizations to automate any number of, of, of processes. And as long as you follow very common sense steps and involve everyone right from the start, I can only see advantages. <laughs>